In this video, I'll show you how to install the Mishimoto aluminum fan shroud on your Mazda RX-8. First off, if you're new here and like to watch RX-8 videos, then consider subscribing. The Mishimoto fan shroud offers an increased reliability due to its solid aluminum construction, great cooling performance and also a lifetime guarantee. So if you're interested, all of the items I will use in this video will be linked in the description. First off, jack up the front of your car and put it on jack stands. Next, grab a pan and slide it under the car right below the radiator drain plug. Now slowly unscrew the bolt with a screwdriver and then remove it with your hand. Release the cap on the coolant reservoir to increase the flow of coolant. When there is no more coolant dripping out, put back the bolt and tighten it. But don't exaggerate cause you can break it. Take out the pan and pour the coolant in a 5 liter plastic bottle so that you can either reuse it if you recently replace it or use it as a measurement for new coolant. Next, put the cap back on the reservoir. Next, disconnect your battery and take it out. Now push the bottom part of the battery case and pull the upper part to get it loose. Do this all around. When done, take it out. Next up, we have to remove the three bolts holding down the bottom piece. Loosen the central bolt with a 10 mm socket and extension on your ratchet. When done, take it out. Remove the two remaining bolts with a 10 mm wrench. When done, take out the bracket. Next up, we have to remove the plastic under tray. To do that, you have to remove the front bolts holding it in place, the two plastic clips on the left side, the plastic clip and bolt on the rear left side, the ones on the rear right side, the two plastic clips on the right side, and the two bolts holding in the rear top part of the tray near the wheels. While there, unclip this wire from the tray so that it's loose. Do this on both sides. Next, if we take a look under this part, take out the remaining two clips holding the top part of the tray in place. Do this on both sides. When done, simply pull down the tray from the front and take it out. Put an extension with a 10 mm socket on your ratchet and start releasing the two bolts holding down your coolant bottle. When done, unscrew them with your hands and take them out. Next, slide out the gray plastic connector from the bottle. Use your bent nose pliers to release this clamp from the hose under the bottle. An important note is that the plastic hose from the radiator where the rubber tube hose from the bottle connects is very prone to snap off and it also did when I was installing mine. Next up, unclip the hose from the connectors and put the bottle on the side. Now remove the two fan connectors by pushing the central clip down and pulling them apart. To make things easier, I use my bent nose pliers to disconnect the right connector. Now simply push the black connector to the right so that it slides out of the bracket. Next, disconnect the two power steering connectors. Cut away any plastic clamps that are holding the main wire harness in place. Take a crosshead screwdriver and remove the plastic bolt holding the air duct where the battery was. Use your pliers to slide back the clamp on the upper radiator hose and then wiggle and pull it out with your hands until you get it out. Next, free up the big rubber hose and slide it away from the fans. If you still have the metal bracket holding it in place, just bend the hose back so that it's not on the fans. Next up, use a ratchet and 10 mm socket to remove the two bolts holding the upper part of the fan in place. When done, disconnect the black AC connector, release the bolt holding the bracket in place and take it out. Now you want to gently and carefully push the metal AC pipe out of the fan housing. Next, take out the plastic air duct going to the ECU. Now go under the front side of the car and locate this bracket with two 12mm bolts holding it in place. Take your ratchet and remove the two bolts on each of the two brackets. You may find some bolts really challenging to get out, so before you start dealing with rounded bolts, I suggest you get a set of special sockets that are capable of removing rounded or difficult bolts, so you'll be sure to get them out no matter the challenge. I'll put a link to these nuts in the description. And there we go, the bolt is out and the bracket is loose. Repeat the same process for the bracket on the other side. For the next part, if you'll choose to work under the car, I suggest you get some safety glasses and something to cover your mouth in case coolant spills out. 
but if you're willing to make some extra effort by turning the wheels all the way to the right and removing the front bumper and side wheel vents behind it you will make the whole process a million times easier and safer next take your bent nose pliers and slide up the clamp on the lower radiator hose when done take a hose pick and work it on the internal part of the hose to get it loose Next up, put a pen under the hose in case coolant spills out. Now here's a trick I found. Take your bent nose pliers, squeeze the clamp and pull it upwards by wiggling it left and right. And in no time, with minimal effort, the hose will be removed. Now unclip the bottom plastic clamp holding the wire harness in place. Take a screwdriver and remove the plastic bolt holding the battery air duct in place. When done, take it out. Now use a ratchet with 10mm socket to remove this bolt holding the negative terminal of the harness in place. When done, take it out. Next up, loosen up your fence by lifting them a bit and then with one hand, gently and carefully push down the lower part of the radiator, work your way on sliding out the fence. It also helps to push the lower radiator hose on the side to make more space. When the fans are almost out, remove them from under the radiator and take them out. With that done, now put the power steering connectors on the rear side of the metal bar so you'll have more space to insert the new fans. If we compare the connectors, we can see that they are not compatible, so here's how to connect them. The left OEM connector will be fitted on the left Mishimoto fan. So take your pliers and cut the old connector wires from the fans. Just like that. Next, strip the ends of the wires and remove the excess rubber. Now cut off the terminals from the Mishimoto wires and repeat the same process as before. Next up, put two shrinking tubes on each wire of the connector and also make sure they are slided all the way to the connector, otherwise they will shrink while soldering. Ask me how I know. When done, twist the copper part of the wires on all four of them. Next, cross the bluish wire from the black connector and the blue wire from the Mishimoto fan together, like this, so that they basically hug each other. And do the same for the two black wires. In some cases, your OEM connector wires will be green and blue. In this case, connect the two blue wires together. Hashtag SX Rotary quick tip. When done, it should look like this. Next up, put a respirator mask and solder the two connections together. Alternatively, you can connect some waterproof connectors on the Mishimoto wires that connect with the wires on the car. I will post a video in the description so you'll get a better idea of what I mean. When you finish soldering the two wires, slide the shrink tube on the connection and use a heat gun or lighter to shrink it, so it makes a nice and secure connection. Next, take the insulation foam strip that came with the fence and measure it from corner to corner and then cut it so you'll get four pieces for each side of the shroud. Now peel the white strip away and position the foamy tape on the one centimeter edges on the shroud and with your hand guiding it, position it in place. When done, press it down by sliding your finger on it. Repeat the same process for the remaining three sides. And this is how it should look once it's installed. Now carefully and gently pull down the radiator and slide in the fence. It's really useful to have another person on the upper side to help you. Once the fence sits on the plastic brackets, you can align the top holes of the fence with the ones on the radiator. Now put a washer on the bolt that came with the kit and screw it in the two upper holes holding the fence in place. When done, use an allen key or screwdriver with allen key head to tighten the two bolts. Now ditch the big bolts that came with the kit cause they don't fit and get some longer M8 bolts, put on a washer and slide them in the two lower brackets. And on the lower side, put a washer with a locking washer and a nut to secure the bolt in place. When done, tighten the whole thing with the wrench holding the top and the ratchet on the bottom. Now cut away the OEM connector from the red and black wires and either install the waterproof connectors or solder the red and blue wires together and the two black wires together. When done, secure them with shrinking tape. Next, connect the two black connectors of the right fan. Take the steering connectors and move them to the front and connect them with the gray connectors to which they were connected before. Now secure all those wires on the main wire harness with a zip tie and cut off the excess zip tie. Put a washer on the new M6 bolt and screw the negative terminal in place with your ratchet. Now put back everything else in the reverse order you've disassembled it. Simply watch the video backwards before the fan removal. 
And there we go, the fan shroud is now fully installed and ready to start cooling. Sadly, I can't show you how it works since my radiator is broken, but once I manage to install my new aluminum one, I'm sure we'll see temperatures drop drastically, as now they are on a constant 98 degrees Celsius. As always, all the items I've used will be linked in the description, so make sure you check them out. And if you found this video useful, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and feel free to check out more RX8 videos on my channel.